All right, chaos reigns on the streets of downtown Atlanta as anti-police protesters torched a cop car and smashed storefronts, leaving the city in ruins. But a CNN guest told everyone on air, there is no violence to see here. I think that there's a real blurring of the lines in, in, in the use of the word violence. You keep using these words, violent, 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 um, and it, it gives the impression, I mean, the only violence that, that or, or the only acts of, of violence against people that I saw were, were actually police tackling protesters. So, Andy, um, you know, this brings me back to scenes of summer 2020 when we had the most expensive destructive riots ever in the history of the United States. The same network then had a reporter literally standing outside a burning building, and the Chiron said, fiery but mostly peaceful protests. Um, we saw hundreds of people arrested for those riots, and most of them had their charges dropped, both on the federal and the state level. Mm -hmm. I think what has people on fire in this country is the two-tiered justice system, where enforcement has become completely ideological. Um, you know, the Capitol riot, you always have to, you know, do some throat clearing about this at the beginning. So, yes, it was terrible. That's why we call it a riot, right? But it also was five hours, whereas the rioting that you're talking about in, in time and space took place for months and was lethal and destroyed property. That, that clip we just heard, uh, he has the temerity to say uh, he only saw people get hurt by the police. First of all, I don't think that's accurate because I looked at a lot of the, the clips yesterday as well. But what their, their position is, if you destroy property, which people le need to have a flourishing economic existence, that that's okay because it's not the same right. uh, as, as hurting people, as if they weren't also hurting people. So... This is a—what I don't understand is um, they moved heaven and earth to try to make a conspiracy-type case on the January 6th people along the lines of what I did with terrorists back in the 1990s, you know, seditious conspiracy and all that stuff. Here you have a movement that's actually trying to and, and sees itself as at war— with the United States, mm -hmm. and we don't see anything along those lines yeah. from prosecutors. Well, Julie, you know, I guess that these rioters uh, broke out in their violence uh, in Atlanta after being upset about the death of 26-year-old Manuel Espan Paez Tehran, who shot at a Georgia state trooper, um, and these state troopers returned fire and he was killed as a result. They're also protesting what they're calling Cop City, which is a new police training facility. So while these people say they're not anti-police, they just want more training, when Atlanta tries to put in a new building for police training, uh, we see violent riots break out this in is the a, city. This is a war on law enforcement. That's all this is. And these are protesters that are posturing against police. They're using any opportunity they can to put police in, in, in a bad place. Right now, you're watching video of actual protesters being, there were arrests made, okay? But what do they do? They start screaming, I can't breathe, to try to rile up the left on the George Floyd movement, which absolutely, you know, it started Black Lives Matter. It was the worst movement possible um, for African Americans in this country. And now they're trying to use this against the cops while the cops are sitting there doing their jobs. And for anybody on any network, it's, it, it, it's, it's reprehensible to call this nonviolent when you're you're lighting cop cars on fire, which they don't know if there's a police in there. So, quite frankly, that's attempted murder if you've got a cop that's in that car. That's not violent. This is why these protests are breaking out, because, number one, they think they're not going to get arrested. And when they do, people whip out their cell phones, and they try to paint cops out in a bad light. It's disgusting. And this is why we've got so much crime in a lot of these cities where the DAs aren't cracking down on these thugs who are taking advantage of law enforcement, because they know that yeah. there's no backing and even in Politics. Even if they're arrested, the charges a lot of the times get dropped. Uh, Joey, you are from Georgia. I am. Your thoughts about what happened in Atlanta? Yeah, uh, somebody needs to tell Dollar Store Beto there, that little freelance journalist that can't get a real job anywhere, that uh, being tackled by the police would be the safest thing that could happen to you if you're throwing fiery things into a building I own. Yep. Because it is the state of Georgia, and I would be carrying a firearm, and I would protect myself. So if you think violence is apprehending someone who's trying to burn down and destroy property, don't come to Georgia because we can get real violent to protect ourselves. That's not what we want for this country. We don't want us at war.
So how do we prevent that? When you've got a class of punks that haven't done much in their life, that haven't achieved much in their life, and need to go find a cause that doesn't affect them or most people they know in order to feel like they have some relevance in this world. When you've got a class of people that do that, and then you've got a class of people that work hard for a living and stay out of the business of others and try to just get through the day, how do you stop them from being at war with one another? Law and order, yep. police training, police presence, and people that do bad things going to jail. So these idiots might need to understand that this training center is the best bet they have to get better cops, more trained, doing better policing, and also being more just in how they do it. Also, this cop city is where firemen are going to train to save old people that have fallen down and get kids out of burning buildings too. So this is completely ridiculous. and need to round up those hippies today and get them the heck out of there. <laughs> Well said. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.